Imagine parking your car in the street, somebody sideswipes your mirror, takes it right off. You come out, your mirror's hanging by some wires. Looks like you need a new mirror. The days of just replacing that mirror though on a car with ADOS and a surround view system are over. Now, replacing that mirror is also going to involve calibration. We're gonna show you that next. Today we're gonna to go through the process of calibrating our surround view system on a VAG vehicle. This will apply for Volkswagen and Audi, which we know there are increasingly more and more of these vehicles in the United States. The surround view system uses four cameras to be able to give the driver that surround view image of their car when they're pulling in or backing out of parking spaces. It's a very useful tool that we can be able to see where our car is and what's around us. Unfortunately, the days of just replacing the mirror are gone. With this system, now that I've replaced the mirror per Audi and Volkswagen, it is now time to calibrate it. You will need a lot of space to be able to do this. I'm in a large open area so I can roll out the mats, which you're gonna see next. The first thing that we're gonna do with any of our ADOS systems is get into our pre-scan and make sure that there's no DTCs related that would interfere with me being able to calibrate the system. Let's go ahead and read DTCs. I'm gonna select all of the modules and press continue. And next I'm also gonna select pre-scan so I can have a complete generated report of everything that we've done before, after, and during the calibration. As you can see, Volkswagen and Audi and the VAG group love their modules, so there's quite a bit here. So it will take you a couple moments just to go ahead and go through all of this and check your DTCs. But we know with my editing team here, it's gonna seem like it takes no time at all. Our pre-scan has completed and I don't have any DTCs related to the mirror replacement so I'm going to go ahead and get into our ADOS calibrations. The report is already saved in our ADOS link, so I have that for later as well. We'll select ADOS calibration. We have a couple choices that have shown up. Four different options are available for calibration on this VAG vehicle. We're going to go ahead and do the surround view camera system now. You'll also notice I don't have the DOS 3000 rack with me. As a matter of fact, I don't need a whole lot of things other than the VAG mats that we're going to use momentarily, and a tape measure. All right, just a warning showed up here saying, hey, make sure you're not doing anything that could render the vehicle inoperative. We're not doing that right now. We're just gonna make sure that our calibration is correct on our surround view system. So right here is our mat requirement. It's gonna have the picture of all the tools that you need as it does with any other calibration you may do in the field. So we've got our mats and I've got my tape measure as well to be able to get the correct distance on this and set this up. So we'll press continue. This function is used to adjust the camera module. Required preconditions, engine off, um, proper battery voltage, if you're not 100% sure about the battery voltage, it's always a good idea to go ahead and set up a charger or a maintainer on your vehicle. We're in good shape on ours right now. And then of course, also set the parking brake. So I'm gonna do that real quick. We'll set the parking brake and continue on. Again, clear all codes. We didn't have anything we needed to worry about. Make sure you did that as it's requiring right there on the screen. Um, Again, now also, since we do have on this one, we have air suspension um, or customized modes of suspension on this vehicle, it's going to have you turn on auto and drive the vehicle at standard vehicle height, um, pressing the button on the actual center console to get it where it is. I've already set that to the required preconditions that it's asked for. So I'll press continue. 
And remember, we're gonna do this calibration anytime any of the following things have occurred. Front, rear, or either side cameras are removed or replaced. Again, you've got four cameras on here. We've replaced the driver's side mirror on this one. So we're gonna to have to obviously go through that as well. Your required preconditions will always show up on your ADOS link. Make sure that the vehicle has the correct tire pressure, lenses are clean, no excessive cargo in the vehicle, tire pressures, all of those things, good space, good lighting, no shadows, no glares, all of those are very important when you're doing any calibration in the field. So we're gonna go ahead and press continue. Now it's gonna have you actually turn on the parking aid button in the vehicle which will turn on the actual whole image uh, of the actual peripheral vision camera system in the vehicle. So we're gonna turn that on real quick. So we're gonna go ahead and go through the guided tour summary, step-by-step step, on setting up our mats. And you can see here the kind of space requirements that you're gonna need quite a bit. If you've done any of these kind of surround view systems, they do take a lot of space. And if you haven't, now you're knowing that they do take a lot of space. So we're gonna go ahead and set up our mats. It's gonna have you roll up the calibration mats parallel, left and right with the vehicle. Um, and you have an arrow pointing towards the front, which you'll see on the, on the mats themselves. And then align the crosshairs um, to the center of the front axle. So I'll use the center line of the vehicle. You'll see that here when I roll it out. Now, another thing, I don't like to put up the mats right next to the tire. I usually use about a hand width away from the tire, edge of the tire when I'm setting up my mats. And you'll see when I'm actually getting the distance why. We don't want those up against the tire. So I'm gonna move this out of the way and roll out my mats. I've got my mats rolled out, my arrows are facing towards the front, and I've got it roughly in the crosshairs of the front axle, already lined up. Now we're gonna go ahead and do our measurements to make sure that it's parallel with the vehicle. So now we're gonna use our tape measure to go ahead and make sure the distance from C on both of these is between 2,000 and 2,500 millimeters. Front and rear should be equal distance. That's why we're making this parallel. So we want the distance C to be the same. Uh, the measurement for D, I usually go about uh, 20 centimeters from the tire. So I'll do all four of those first and then double check C to make sure that they're within the specifications. And I found that the 20 centimeters I keep from the tire with my mats will usually fall in that range of 2,000 to 2,500 millimeters that I need to make sure that I'm in to calibrate this. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my measurements, make sure I get all of those set correctly before I press continue. These mats are big. Sometimes it can help to have a second person, if you can, to move these around a little bit. This is the most time consuming part of the entire process because once I have these set up, we're in the home stretch. All right, I went 20 centimeters from each wheel to the edge of the mat. Now I'm gonna make sure that my distance here to here is the same front and back. I 
and we'll check the back. Make any adjustments as needed to get these things parallel with the vehicle. And we're right on the money. That never happens. Even in a video that's being edited. <laughs> it's usually a little bit of adjusting back and forth. But we got it first try. And that's why, again, I like to start with those wheels being 20 centimeters. It gives me a real close approximation on these mat positioning. So now that I have my distance equal on both sides, parallel with the vehicle, We'll press continue. Now it's telling you again, if you've ever dealt with any of these vehicles, if it has automatic suspension control, to make sure I go ahead and set it to comfort. I'm gonna do that real quick, make sure it's in the comfort mode. The button can be found on the center console area next to the shifter. Asking us to turn the ignition off now, we're gonna go ahead and do that. Ignition on. and our calibration was successfully completed. At this point, of course, our report has been saved to our ADOS link, and I can provide a customer copy so that they know that the calibration has been done successful. At this point, as a technician, what you should do is go ahead and take this out and perform some parking lot maneuvers. Make sure that everything appears as it should that the lines match up where they should as well when you're backing up or going forward, nearing an object, and make sure that the peripheral vision doesn't look skewed or abnormal. I'll go ahead and do that, and if everything's good, I can return it back to the customer. Seems like a lot of work for just a mirror, but that's what it takes some time. Anytime you wanna learn any more about these ADOS processes using the ADOS link, and the DOS 3000, make sure you check out the Hunter YouTube page. Thanks for watching.